Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Exploring My Minecraft World here in Briarwood. Now, today we're going to be exploring the southeast. Uh, so these are the seven towns, cities, hamlets, villages, whatever you want to call them, that make up uh, the southeastern quadrant of the country. Um, there are 26 cities in total, uh, but the southeast... East is kind of made up of these seven towns uh, as far east as four from center and as far south as three from center. So uh, today we're going to start as far east as we can go in this world. And what you're seeing here is a very underdeveloped version of the Metrodome. So the thing about the southeast that you'll notice in today's video is it is probably the most underbuilt uh section of the entire world that I have so far. So uh, what you're looking at here, like I said, is basically it's going to be a recreation of the Metrodome, except I flipped left and right field. So in left field here, right now it's set up in its baseball configuration, or it will be once it's finally complete. Um, but all of the seats back here that would usually be down for football and soccer are tucked back. I'm currently in the process of constructing uh, what was called the baggy. It was kind of a... Um, like an 18 foot, I think somewhere around 20 feet um, of artificial wall that they put in front of these seats to basically be a make up for the fact that the, the fence is so short in what is right field at the original Metrodome. Um, but of course here is left field. So then uh, these seats will, will drop down at different sections. I'm using these to just measure um, where the seats should be when they're in their down configuration. So this one's kind of a mess in process, but eventually it's going to have this entire lower bowl here. It's called Amazon Park. Um, I've been using corporate sponsors for uh, from all over basically the United States and the world to uh, make up for this, um, just the names of these stadiums. But then in addition to the lower bowl, we're going to see... Um, boxes right off of the lower bowl that kind of overlay the main uh, concourse. And then on top of that, we're going to have, I think this is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I think it's a 15 seat or 15 row upper deck, excuse me. Uh, and then boards in right field and the third baseline as opposed to the first baseline and left field as they were in the original Metrodome. But this is in the town of Rodenton. Um, it's, it's based off of um, Inner Roden in Switzerland. It's at a, a the latitude of zero north south and four east of center. Center being, of course, Briarwood proper. Uh, but this stadium serves the purpose of being home to three teams. So it negates the need for two separate baseball and football stadiums. It's home to the Beavers baseball team. Uh, their color scheme is brown and orange. It's also home to the Millers football team, uh, which has a black and tan color scheme and then Rodenton Albion, the soccer team, with a brown and white color scheme. Uh, eventually, I'm going to have a uh, an arena based around uh, Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles, as it is currently known as of me recording. i got to find my way to the, uh, to the transit system here, but um, that'll be home to the hockey and f or excuse me, yeah, the hockey and basketball teams somewhere around here, and that is going to be called the Lowe's Center, but I have not yet started building that. Like I said, the Southeast is probably the least developed of all of these. So we're going to take this transit system. Um, I've said in previous episodes, it usually takes about a minute on these fast travel services. It's, it's packed ice, uh, and I use boats to travel on top of it, uh, which cuts down the time between things. It would take about five minutes to fly between the different locations or at least it's five minutes of straight building, but I can usually get between locations on this fast transit system in just under or over a minute a piece. So uh, I'll fill the dead air just kind of talking about the world a little bit. The southeast here is roughly based on the southeast of Switzerland. So um, right now we are traveling from Rodenton to, I got to remember, three east uh, is going to be, I'm using my notes here, 3 East is called uh, Greenhaven, which is based on Geneva. So uh, we're going to come to this big stadium here once we get to Greenhaven. It's the only stadium that I've started to build of all of these. Eventually, I'm going to have uh, a hockey and basketball arena based around TD Garden. But this is based on the Oakland Coliseum. Uh, right now, it's in its down position for football and soccer, specifically soccer here. So the outfield seats that you'd see for baseball are all the way down. This is basically a replication of the Mount Davis structure. 
that was built in the 90s for the return of the Oakland Raiders. And then eventually this entire, the other three quarters of this stadium are going to be a semicircle. Uh, you see the, the lower tier here, that's at about a, um, a four to one incline. Uh, this is about a two to one incline for the second deck, two to one incline for the box level seats, and then a one to one incline uh, for the 15 seat upper deck. And then the exterior is going to be purple glass but this purple color scheme is uh, home to the Lightning, which is the baseball team. They are purple and yellow. Uh, the Greenhaven Gorillas, uh, which you can kind of see the signage in the end zones there, they are purple and silver. And then the Greenhaven Wanderers, purple and light blue, as you see the, the uh, wall structure or the, the tarp structure along the side here. Everything about the baseball field is covered up right now except for what is not in play. Uh, but if you look very closely, you can see the lines. Um, I don't know if you can see it on your screen. You can kind of see it there. But the lines for baseball and American football are separated very subtly from the grass into that green wool tarp turf type section there. We're going to head south now. There are three, I believe, is it three um, towns that go directly south of Greenhaven here. So we're going to get on this one and head south. And that is going to lead us to, uh, let's see, one south, three east, if I can find it in my notes. It's a lot easier when I look it up on my grid map, um, but I don't have access to my grid map while I'm using my computer to record. So uh, one south, three east, bear with me, bear with me. Oh, come on, it's got to be here somewhere. Greenhaven, just south of Greenhaven, is a town called uh, Slippersboro, which is based on uh, Schweiz or, or Schwiz in Switzerland. Um, I believe it's pronounced Schweiz. Uh, but Slippersboro is based on Schweiz. Uh, it is home to a replication, we'll see in a quick second here, of Coors Field in Denver, of course, flipped with the outfields. Um, it's also going to be home to a replication of Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, as well as I just started a replication of St. Louis's City Park, but that is really not gone anywhere. But you'll see us coming up on it right here. Uh, this is going to be Heineken Field, uh, home of the Slippersboro Ironman baseball team. They have a purple and orange color scheme here. All that is really built for this one. Um, you see the massive tiered right field section that Coors Field has, uh, this time in left. Big fence here, very deep fences here, of course. Uh, if you're in actual Denver, um, it is going to have very deep outfields on account of the balls travel further because of the altitude. Same case would be for our replication of Switzerland. This right here are going to be side-by-side -side dugouts, or excuse me, bullpens. Um, you kind of have this alpine center here. I've added a bridge and a water feature that the, uh, the one in Denver doesn't have. I thought it'd be a cool idea to put the, um, like one of the offices back in this section. And so in order to get to the bullpens from the offices of the pitching staff, you have to go across the bridge. And I thought that would be kind of a, if you were a pitching coach, I, th I thought that'd be kind of a cool way to do your job uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Behind here is the start, like I said, of uh, that city park replication. Uh, right now, I have just started the end zones. This will be home to the Slippersboro Wilderness football team, in addition to uh, the Slippersboro Corporate, which is the green and gray uh, color scheme that you're starting to see here for their soccer team. We head south then. Uh, next, we're going to go to, let's find it here, two south, three east is going to be Clericboro. Uh, Clericboro is based on Glarus in Switzerland. And if we can get back to the transit system, we will head all the way down there. So uh, another bamboo boat that I have here. This should take us a little under a minute here. Um, but this one, like I said, is based on Glarus. And Cleric Bureau is uh, most notably home to, do I have this right? Two south, three east. Yes, so this is home to the zoo. Um, 
I have just barely started work on any of the stadiums. Eventually, we're going to have a replication of America Family Field in Milwaukee uh, that I've called Geico Park. It's home to the Clericboro Wolves. Uh, McDonald's Arena, which is based on the Bolshoi Ice Dome in Sochi, Russia, um, which will be home to the hockey team, the Clericboro Cox, and the Clericboro Arsenal basketball team, uh, as well as one more stadium called Sinai Stadium based on Nuevo Mirandila. Um, in Spain. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head which team plays there, but there you see um, that is where the baseball stadium will be. Eventually, it'll have the massive fan roof that American Family Field in Milwaukee has, but most notably, the zoo. So um, this is based on the Dakota Zoo. It's the local zoo from the town I grew up in. Uh, I haven't built any of the front buildings here, so eventually there's going to be a concessions area as well as an entry building. But uh, what you see here, like I said, is a reverse replication of the Dakota Zoo. Um, and so you'll see some liberties that I took with the creatures that are in here. There is kind of this farm feature as you walk in at the Dakota Zoo. Um, that is home to chickens as well as goats. But since goats can jump so high uh, in Minecraft, I decided to replace the goats with sheep and vice versa for at least this section. Um, here are miniature horses, which in this game I've just put horses. Miniature donkeys are just donkeys. And then they have a Scottish Highland cattle exhibit that I have frogs jumping in and out of at the moment. It's kind of a mess in terms of how many creatures are all over the place here. Then here they have a, a uh, hog exhibit. It's Vietnamese hogs, but obviously right here it's just normal pigs. Um, we're going to skip this building for now and circle around to the back. So I did make a mistake when I was constructing this. I mentioned it's a, a mirrored image or a reversed image of the Dakota Zoo map. That is until we get to the back here. I, in building this, forgot to reverse the backside here. And so it kind of becomes a jumbled mess. Um, but I'm going to do my best to fit it into the framework that I have built around. So right here, uh, these are Clydesdale horses or American cream draft horses. Uh, and then back here, they're in the process of building a red panda exhibit. Well, of course, there's not red pandas in the game, so I just have regular pandas. So let's do a little fly over here. Uh, you'll see, uh, I think, four pandas in here. I haven't given any of them names yet, but they exist in kind of this birch uh, bamboo section here. You circle ar around back, and this building on the backside is home to penguins. Of course, there's no penguins in Minecraft actively, so uh, I have axolotls on this backside here. There is a, an access window to the inside of their exhibit, but this is the, or the outside version of their exhibit. You walk through here. Here is the inside of the axolotl exhibit, or the penguin exhibit, as it exists in real time. The inside of the panda exhibit, nothing special, just kind of an interior house that you can look into. And then this is meerkats in real life, but of course here is just rabbits. Pair of bathrooms on the right side there, and then there's that draft horse uh, Clydesdale exhibit again. We continue on. At the Dakota Zoo, these are uh, takens. Uh, I can't remember exactly where they're from. It's it's the Himalayan steppes, but they're basically a goat-like creature. I've com uh, completed the exterior of this exhibit. I will add more to it as time goes on. Um, there will be another exhibit here for, I think, moose is what is there in actuality. Um, I'm going to put uh, goats there again, but given how long it takes me to build each of these exhibits, I've kind of skipped it for now, I guess you could say. Uh, this right here are, oh gosh, I think it's it's either doll sheep or bighorn sheep, but I've added sheep here, another sheep exhibit here, more sheep exhibit here. Basically what I'm going to do is as more animals come into Minecraft, um, I will replace all of the sheep exhibits uh, fillingly. I'd like to get as close to the actual animals that are in the zoo that I've replicated um, for the sake of continuity, but most of the time, the closest you're going to get are sheep or deer um, when it comes, or uh, excuse me, sheep or goats when it comes to deer and the different animals that are there in actuality. Just for fun, I added a mushroom exhibit uh, waiting for these mushrooms to grow, or, or I'm going to have to construct them by hand, but that is here. This one, I didn't realize you needed a double. Uh, 
a double fence for camels, but camels will walk right over a normal sized fence. So eventually I will add more detail to the camel exhibit here. Provolsky's horses here, just regular horses. Uh, this will be pronghorn antelope, which I will put goats in. And then back here is American bison. Instead of doing cows, I thought I'd be a little more fun and put these bad boys in the back corner. This circles around. Uh, we'll, we'll watch it from the other side. This is, like I said, where it gets kind of messy with me building it the wrong way. So um, eventually there's going to be a bunch of different deer exhibits in the middle here, which of course will be goats. We come back into this section the way we came by this big discovery building here. And here you see turtles. This is uh, American alligators in the Dakota Zoo's version. And right next door is this indoor center for uh, just kind of indoor animals, I guess you could say. This right here, um, the inside of this building looks nothing like it does in the actual zoo, but it's kind of a house that I've used to house indoor animals. This are, these are frogs right here. That is why you see so many frogs hopping around. They've escaped uh, in my construction. Bats right here. Over here, we have regular spiders. I have a ton of them in there. I put water around the sides so they don't crash and die, which is the case for pretty much every single one of my cave spiders. So I got to kind of redesign this exhibit so they don't die. There's one more remaining in there. And then here we have bees. All of them are hiding or in their nests at the moment. Uh, we see some loose ones flying around here eventually. Um, I'd like to put something in these exhibits. I'm not quite sure what yet or how I will do that. Um, but then that is kind of the entire southern half of the zoo here. The northern half, uh, if we go over in this direction, uh, this is a creature called an oodad. It's kind of like a, um, like a North African Berber sheep type thing. Uh, so I have sheep right here. These are mouflons, which are kind of like a, a deer type antelope. In the Mediterranean, uh, that right there, I have put goats in. They're doing their best to escape, but I'm trying to not let them. And then, of course, there's just normal llamas here, which I do have a handful of llamas on the backside. Uh, this is the coyote exhibit. And just wolves. Nothing of major note there. Of course, they're stocking everything that they see outside of their exhibit at the moment. Uh, these are gray wolves here, this big exhibit that circles around back. Uh, over on this side are foxes, or excuse me, no, foxes are going to be up here, along with some pigs in their exhibit that I'd like not to be there. Double foxes, uh, we got more foxes in a double exhibit there. This right here are um, pumas or cougars or painters, panthers, however you want to call them, but I've just put cats there in addition to lynx and bobcats on the backside of that. Uh, more foxes, like I said, right there. This is the bear exhibit, home to grizzly bears in the Dakota Zoo. I've kind of replicated it the best I could. And then on the backside here, this uh, these are tigers and snow leopards. So the snow leopard side here, uh, it's kind of got this accessible building. It's kind of cool. You, um, It's got a low ceiling, so adults don't usually go back there, but the kids are able to crawl their way back here and they kind of have these access windows. So you can see the snow leopard exhibit on this side and go to the other side here. And now this is the tiger exhibit. I've added a waterfall there just for some, uh, some fun. But then this is the, the little viewing area here for the tigers. Then we get, um, let's see, these are polis cats. It's, it's like a wild cat uh, subspecies. Servals here, which I don't have to put big fences because these ocelots can't jump. Uh, and then macaws, or just parrots here. I've added a landing platform, but they don't typically, oh, there we get one sitting on it. Uh, eventually there's going to be a primate house, which I think I'm just going to put villagers in. Uh, and then I just kind of got to fill out the empty space. But that is it for Cleric Burrow. So, um, like I said, I've just started work on American Family Field, a replication back there. It's going to get really close to the station, so I might have to rebuild the station or at least put it in a different location further down the line. This is going to take us a little bit, so I'm going to clear some dead air here. The southeast of Switzerland is an interesting kind of geographical region because you you have 
Switzerland is basically split into four parts, and it's not necessarily geographical, but in the west of Switzerland is mostly where you're going to find uh, the French-speaking region. You're going to get areas like um, you're going to get areas like Geneva. You're going to get areas like um, oh, what am I thinking? Geneva is the big one. Um, in the case of how I've set up my grid system, I kind of had to rearrange things because there's a lot more Swiss cantons. Um, centered around the, the various sides of the countries. And so um, I've moved things around. They're not always in their geographical position based on, on where I've built my town. And so that's why you see Geneva uh, in the southeast here. But the west of Switzerland in actuality is the more French-speaking area. Um, the central and northern parts of Switzerland is going to be the, the German-speaking majority. Uh, German is the most prominent language in Switzerland, despite it being a multilingual country. In the south, you're going to get more Italian-speaking uh, persons or Italians who speak German, which is kind of an interesting case. Um, as a wrestling fan, this is kind of a, a sidetrack, but... Um, there's a wrestler in WWE named Giovanni Vinci, um, or his real name is Fabian Eichner. Despite his German name, he grew up in Italy. Uh, he is a German, uh, an ethnic German who grew up in Italy speaking German. Um, you get kind of a crossover with the Italian-Swiss border, so you get a lot of Italians speaking German and Germans speaking Italian, which is kind of weird, but that's how the south of Switzerland operates. And then in, in the east of Switzerland, there's a minority that speaks Romanche. Um, and I, I would not be the expert off the top of my head to tell you um, exactly what Romanche is or how it's spoken or what it's close to. I believe it's a Romance language, so it's going to be similar to something like Romanian. Don't quote me on that. I might be wrong about that, but that is kind of the, the fourth main language in Switzerland. So we go back up to what is our, our zero north-south. Um, the, the transit system, I've said it in past episodes, uh, in order to get east and west, you have to either be on the, um, the southern version of the east-west line, which is at the zero mark, or one north-south. Um, I could probably show you this easier on a grid system, so I'll probably do that in a future episode, just how I have the transit system set up. But um, in layman's terms, in order to get east or west anywhere, you have to be either on the, the one north or the zero north-south line. So right now we're on the zero north-south line traveling from two east to one east. And uh, let's see here, one, or excuse me, uh, we're heading to two east right now, aren't we? Yes, I believe so. Um, we're heading from three east to two east. If that doesn't make any sense to you, I do apologize. But uh, zero to two, we're going to a town called Shrive. And you've probably seen this before. Um, in the first episode of this series, we, we spent some brief time here, and not a lot has changed since we saw it last. I mentioned I'm going to have to update um, the Pepsi logo, as Pepsi is changing their corporate logo this year. Um, I have completed the upper deck section behind the third baseline here. This is essentially Tropicana Field in Tampa, with the outfields switched, so the Ray tank is in left field instead of right center field, um, and I've also decided to make this an outdoor stadium, so it's still going to have the circular feel to it, um, but I wanted it to look as quirky as possible. Not that Tropicana Field isn't already quirky, I just wanted it to be even worse. Uh, so this Ray tank here, I have salmon in it. Eventually, there's going to be a center field structure here. Back here is uh, a replication of Lumen Field in Seattle, or CenturyLink Field as it was formerly known, um, home of the Seahawks and the Sounders. This here is home to the Penguins, uh, the Shrive Penguins, which is what it, the end zones are set up for right now, as well as Shrive 94. Uh, and this stadium is known as HP Park. There is also going to be a replication of the Fiserv Forum in Milwaukee, uh, home to the Bulls and the Riders, which are the, the hockey and basketball teams of this town here. But we are going to go south. And if I look on my little chart, oh, ran straight into it when I wasn't looking. Uh, if I were to look on my chart here and go to one south to east, as we go on the boat here, that is going to take us to Let's see here, one south to east. Let me straighten out the boat real quick. Uh, that's going to be home to Walderville, which is a kind of a, a playoff of uh, Nidvalden in Switzerland. Uh, but Walderville, it's got 
three different stadiums, or it will once it's finished. The arena has not yet been built, but the arena is going to be based around the center court at Wimbledon. Um, the football and soccer stadium is based on BMO Field. It's called Chase Park. We'll give you a, a look at that once we get there. Um, but there is also a baseball stadium home to the Walderville Celts or the Walderville Celts um, called State Farm Field, which is based on Comerica Park in Detroit. So um, this one might be a little more than a minute. I think when I timed it yesterday, this is one of the longer commutes, and I don't really know why that is. Um, I think I might have just mistimed it. Um, like I said earlier, I built five minutes between each location um, straight in order to get kind of a distance between the different towns. So over here is going to be that BMO field replication, BMO field being in Toronto. Um, but this, like I said, is home to the Wallerville Terrapins, which is the football team, and just Wallerville FC, which is home, uh, or which is the name of their soccer team. Over here is the Comerica Park replication. Um, like you've seen with all of these southeastern towns, it's brutally unfinished and, and almost a bit embarrassing how little I've started working on these. Um, but this will be Comerica Park in Detroit with the fields flipped. So you'll see the scoreboard in right field instead of in left field. And then, of course, center field, you're going to have the uh, big center field structure there. I might add the cars, too. I'd, that'd kind of be fun. I've never really built cars in Minecraft before, especially not for a structure, but I think it'd kind of be fun to add that. We're going to go to 2 south, 2 east now, and the town we are looking for, let me hop on the boat here, and go south. Uh, there are two more towns directly south of where we're at now. Uh, so 2 and 2 is going to be a town called Grey Ghost, and this is based on Grisons or Grissons in Switzerland. Um, the baseball team is called the Phantoms, the Grey Ghost Phantoms. Uh, they play in a multi-purpose stadium alongside uh, the Grey Ghost Elders football team and Grey Ghost FC, the soccer team, uh, in a stadium called Boeing Park. And Boeing Park is based on London Stadium, home of West Ham United in London, of course. Um, and I decided to build that because London Stadium has been home to the MLB London series for the last few years. And it's got such unique dimensions that I kind of wanted to replicate it in Minecraft as best I could. So we'll come eventually to the apex and you should be able to see uh, on the left side here uh, that Boeing Park. I've also started building um, very, very barely an arena called the Tinder Center, which is a replication of Ball Arena in Denver, formerly the Pepsi Center. And that is home to the Grey Ghost Wolfmen hockey team. That's over on that side there. You can just barely see the start of it. Um, but the Grey Ghost Wolfmen and the Grey Ghost Sacrifice basketball team. But here is that London Stadium. It's always hard building circles in Minecraft. Um, not necessarily getting... I, like, I can look up... Uh, there's a Minecraft circle generator that I use that I can easily look up circle dimensions. The problem is... It's a lot easier to build in a straight line. So when you're building a circular stadium, it just takes so much longer. Um, but you can see it's circular. Um, London Stadium is actually an oval, but I wanted to use a circle because I thought it might be easier to try to build. Um, but you see the baseball dimensions there. You see kind of the what is left of the lines for the football and soccer stadiums there. Uh, the seats tucked away as far back as they can. Eventually, there's going to be a center field structure here. But just very, very slowly working my way around that circle. Eventually, there's going to be a deck of uh, club seats as well as a... Excuse me, lost my train of thought there. Um, as well as a deck, uh, an upper deck. But that being said, I thought there was one more to the south of this, and I am obviously wrong. So um, that being said, we have gone through all seven, if I actually counted them up, of the southeastern towns. So with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. Thank you for continuing on with the series and checking out the world. Each time we go to a different uh, area, they should be updated just that much more slightly. But this gives me a little wiggle room to... Um, I'm, I'm recording these kind of all at once, and by the time I get back around to each section or each town, we should have more progress going forward. So, that being said, this has been the Southeast. We will see you very, very soon.